A couple of more questions, and this one is for Allison. If you do have to leave, just if you could do it quietly so that the rest of the audience can hear. I understand your organization has done some analysis on the American media. Can you please share your findings on this topic? Or, I'm sorry, and how this topic is covered, I should say. Thank you. I'm very happy to do that. Um, we have studied this topic in several newspapers and uh, our results have been extremely disturbing for those of us who believe that journalism should be as accurate and full and unbiased as possible. As I already mentioned, but I'll repeat because this is so, so disturbing. The San Francisco Chronicle's coverage of the first six months of the Palestinian uprising covered in headline coverage 150% of Israeli children and only 5% of Palestinian children for the exact same time period, same type of coverage. During that time, there had been actually 93 Palestinian children had been killed. Um, they were accounted for about 30% of the casualties of the, the people killed in Palestine. A third of them are children. This is a, an extraordinary fact. None of this was being reported in the San Francisco Chronicle. In the first three months alone, I believe it was 159 Palestinian children suffered eye injuries. Quite a few had been shot in the eye. All of this was available, the information was in Haaretz, in Israeli newspapers quite often, but not in the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, another, the Chronicle we didn't choose because we thought it was any better or any worse than any others, it's just our local paper. We also looked at the, uh, a paper in Connecticut. Some other people that are working with us gathered the data, we checked their data, and we found a surprisingly and disturbingly similar result. In the first six months, the uh, New London Day, the daily newspaper in the, in, uh, the New London Groton area of Connecticut, had covered of, of children's deaths. It had covered 100% of Israeli children's deaths, and it covered 1% of Palestinian children's deaths. This is extraordinary, and it is not journalism. In the San Jose Mercury News nearby, we did a study of their headline coverage of deaths on both sides. To me, both sides matter equally. And what we found is in their headline coverage of deaths, they had covered 73% of Israeli deaths in front page headlines and 5% of Palestinian deaths in front page headlines. Now another organization, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, an excellent watchdog organization that's been around for at least 15 years, did a similar type of study. Uh, they also, by the way, all of our studies were six month studies. These were long periods. The Mercury News, we have 12 months and we found this, the same data for all 12 months. Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, FAIR, did a study of National Public Radio, NPR. Among their findings was the fact, again, they looked at, at children's deaths, how those were covered in NPR. What they discovered is NPR had covered 90% of Israeli children's deaths, and during the same six-month period, they had covered 20% of Palestinian children's deaths. This is what is going on in our newspaper coverage, and the thing that is equally, probably more troubling, is that the coverage quite often gets at the reverse. The front page headlines of the Mercury News, for example, showed the reverse of what was actually going on and nobody noticed. So that shows that the same kind of reporting was being done by TV and by radio. I had the opportunity to work with some of the media over the past three years that I've been involved in um, what I call education toward peace. Uh, one thing that I found out which is really interesting is that as far as the media leadership is concerned, the media can do no right. No matter what they say, one side or the other is complaining. And sometimes both sides are complaining about the same thing. And it's really a hard situation to be in. This is not to justify them. But it is to point out that the way we look at statistics, the way we look at the media sometimes is a bit skewed. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, what Ms. Weir just spoke about is very important. 
and statistically it's correct. However, the key word there is headlines. The headlines do not reflect the reality. Why not? Well, I got a call about a year and a half ago from the editor of one of our local newspapers and he was asking me, you know, we've gotten this request from people to they look at our headlines and it seems that we're terribly skewed because the headlines are not reflecting. So I said, yeah, the key word is headlines. What do you guys put in your headlines? Well, we put in our headlines the buses that get blown up, the kids that are burned alive inside of a school bus. We put in our headlines the places where people put bombs during parties. Those are the things that we put in the headlines because that's what makes newspapers sell. Now you know he's right. So if Palestinian children were being killed that way, then chances are we would see them in the headlines too. Now, it's interesting. You guys have yelled out racist and uh, Professor Bajan said the same thing. What has race got to do with what I'm saying? What kind of race? Most of the people in Israel are the same race as the Palestinians. Racism has nothing to do with this. We're talking about statistics. So you should ask yourselves, why do you imagine that what I'm saying is racist? It has nothing to do with race. I would suggest to you that that is something which reflects your need to create a knee-jerk reaction to things that you don't want to hear.